You started to do golems. You started to go golems. <laughs> oh no, why am I doing golems? And then you said, oh wait, Jay, we can base and TP, double TP. You're the one, you're the mastermind behind I the double so, TP? Yeah. No, I think with Darshan, we played a lot because um, whenever Darshan makes a great call, we will <laughs> like jokingly take his credit, you know, like as a, as a collective team. I actually don't remember if I made the call or not anymore. <laughs> well, we're just talking about this. I'm pretty sure you made the call. Like, if I remember correctly, because I know that we were trolling you. We all knew that you made the call, but we were just trolling you that we, like, someone else made the call. Oh, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I made the call. <laughs> yeah, Caitlyn should have really been able to carry that game. We really brought that one out of the magic hat. We <laughs> yeah. just pulled out a win, pulled out a double yeah, TP yeah, out of the win. Yeah. Somehow on the same creep. Yeah. That was, that was amazing, actually. Gilgi's Golden Age from 2015 to 2016 produced some of the greatest moments in LCS history, both at home and abroad. For an organization whose trophy case remained infamously empty until the summer of 2015, the sudden breakup of the beloved Rush Hour bot lane in the wake of their first LCS title came as a complete shock. But the faith remained, as CLG's quickly rebuilt 2016 roster claimed yet another title at the Spring Finals in Las Vegas, followed by NA's first ever MSI Finals appearance. This run cemented them as one of the greatest North American teams of all time, and left an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of the CLG faithful. But none of that would have been possible without one of the most out-of-the-box plays in league history, and it wasn't at MSI or in Las Vegas, it wasn't a pentakill or a rocket jump. It was in the LCS semifinals. It was when CLG, like magic, made something from nothing. It was a play that can only be described as truly counter logic. There is so much to say about this. CLG, you could say they had a tumultuous offseason. Cobelter is off the team and Doublelift is off the team, but they also said that was by choice. So CLG is looking to come into this split and just build off of their NILCS championship last year. What was the rebuild like for the CLG? What happened to CLG after you lost your star player? Um, I think the 2015 roster was good too. We had a good team, but I think that this team was just different, right? Different strengths and weaknesses. And I think that none of us felt like, oh, we don't have double lift anymore, or we don't have pole belter anymore. Uh, things are going to be a lot harder. I think maybe fans saw it a little bit differently. Okay, they're going to take two of the best North American players, like pole belter and double lift, and they're just going to replace them with random rookies, essentially. Um, I remember, I wouldn't say there was a lot of hate directed towards us, but there was a lot of like doubt towards CLG in general. like. What is the management doing? Um, yeah, like, there's no way they're gonna do well this split. I remember like double with throwing like a jersey into the trash can, so I think that was like yeah. pretty hype for people. And I think people were like, "Wow, like I don't think there's any way CLG is gonna win the next split." For CLG, what do you think? Like, how difficult do you think it was for them going through you know a, a rebuilds that you've been through many times before? losing a star like Peter or Double Lift was a big deal, right? Like, a, I think a lot of the community was like, that was like the worst decision CLG has ever made in its entire career. Like, why did you let go of Peter, right? You just won a championship. Like, why don't just keep the same roster, right? I think what matters most is that you do everything you possibly can to win. And it's more important than one individual on a respective team. It's about the collective. And they made a decision to rebuild, to start again, go back to the drawing board and determine the right type of team that they're gonna need to compete and do well. I was imported from Korea and uh, I didn't really know anyone uh, in America living in the same house, like experiencing the sad moments and the good moments together. Like even though we fight, like I think in the end, after practice, like we'll go to a taco truck at 2 a.m. Um, I remember like so many times going with Darshan with other teammates and like 
we'll just talk through our, like, of all our, our problems. So for me, like at that time, it kind of came to me as a, instead of a teammate, more so like a friend or even a family member. In terms of like bonding with your teammates, oh yeah, I mean, you're around those guys all the time, you know, like you're playing with them all day. You go out for like, you know, McDonald's at midnight with these guys, stuff like that, so. Yeah, I've heard rumors of uh, 2 a.m. taco truck runs. Can you confirm those? Yeah. Yeah, you can There's a, <laughs> Wow, I forgot about taco truck runs, yeah. In game as well, like, we really rarely had like negative comps. Like, we didn't easily give up games. That's why, like, we could even come back to like, like 15K gold list on stage games, stuff like that. I know that he got my back and we can fight this battle together and in the end win. Is there any moments in the regular season you have like particular memories of? The most notable one for me is when we beat Immortals. Okay, you remember, remember the game, game against Immortals? I remember that game. We remember that one. I remember I was just like, I picked Fiora into Quinn because I just was so confident on my Fiora. I'm like, I'll win on both sides of the matchup yeah. or something like <laughs> ridiculous like that. I think. Yeah, we had some those moments. Uh, we also got some tips from Trick 2G, I remember. <laughs> and then we pulled out Udyr and everyone thought we were trolling. But Udyr and Fiora did a lot of work in that game, I remember. I think it's always exciting to beat. I think they were undefeated before then, yeah. right? And I think, you know, you don't want any team to go undefeated in Slay. You want to knock them down. Yeah, and pick, yeah so. for sure. Mortals trying to keep that perfect record alive here. And the gold lead is only 800 gold in the favor of CLG after all this. The block is there to try and kill Cooney on the other side while Immortals are doing Baron. See what he's going for the win in the bottom lane. This is going to be very tough. Yeah, we, we were the one three one team, I remember. Oh yeah. We're Zix would always say that. Yeah. Tony would always say that. Come on guys, we're the one three one team. <laughs> yeah. Our team was kind of designed well for that. Like um, we had such a strong trust to each other. Um, for example, like Darshan will trust us that we'll do our job, like annoying them, like not making the base. And they will trust in Darshan that Darshan won't TP to the fight and just get his own like uh, objectives. Um, and I feel like our communication was we, we've practiced those moments so many times. I feel like even in scrims there was a lot of times like that we were they're doing Baron or we're doing Baron and making them react to us and let Darshan just split push. <laughs> and, yeah. and Smithy steals the Baron yeah. somehow. Again. Oh, Smithy, the time buyer of all time buyers. Can he do it? He wants He's to smite. The smite by 50 50. Oh! He steals it. And Counter Logic Gaming is very much still in it. Darshan TP'd, but he wasn't actually able to get Baron. He's on to the Nexus. Does it even matter that Smithy just came up that big? Yes, it does. What a barn burner. Darshan, a few more hits. He gets it to go down. Counter Logic Gaming defeats Immortals. Counter Logic Gaming with a crazy ending. At the core of it, it was still Darshan split pushing down at the end of the game and their patience to play that move over and over again. Split pushing in general is like probably one of the hardest strategies. It's not the hardest strategy in the game. That's why you like rarely see it now. And I think that speaks to like how good our coordination was. I think that it was a hard strategy to execute. And I think that it would be really hard to recreate now. I was really frustrated after the match because I felt like I felt like I did nothing and I won the game. And I didn't want to feel like that, right? I wanted to feel like I was contributing to the game. And I never wanted to be that guy that was just on the bus, just just chilling, just riding along, just getting carried. So I wanted to be like, like if you know, Seal's just gonna win. It's because I'm a big part of it. I remember um, my old like player development coach Mike at the time. He, you know, we went on like a long walk after. We were just talking, and I was just venting my frustrations. And uh, he was just pretty much saying like, look, you know, you don't have to do everything every game. It's a team game. Like you gotta take it slow. Ladies and gentlemen, we are hitting the playoffs now. It has already been an intense season that we've gone through, and TL looks to possibly make their way into the finals against defending champs CounterLogic Gaming. I like briefly remember at the time that people were thinking Team Liquid was like the best NALCS team. People didn't think we were as good. People were like, yeah, they got second, but like, I mean, kind of similar to the whole you know narrative. We had the whole split. It's just like people are people are still like 
kind of like not sure about your roster changes, guys. Like, you look, you're good, but like maybe you're not the best, you know? We all believed as a team that we could win the whole thing. Like, we had it. Like, oh my gosh, we're doing it. We've done it. The 3 0. Like, this is possible. And we were confident in our own play. If they can win this to make it to the finals, it gives a chance for them to win the 2016 spring split, get their team logo hung in the studio, get their picture on the sidewall, go to the midseason invitational. We had signed Piglet a little bit before. He was kind of our star player, right? Previous world champion, big name. And so we had this kind of like NA with Piglet <laughs> kind of roster. It was pretty big. Like when I first heard the news, I couldn't really believe it. Back then, I think we did have uh, some degree of respect towards him. He won worlds in season three, I want to say. Came from SKT T1, you know, the biggest Korean team there, with the one with Faker on it. It was a huge signing. He came to Team Liquid. And before I was playing, I think this is in 2015, was when, you know, people were touting him as like, oh, this guy is like unbelievable, like so much better than the other AD carries in LCS. Piglet is a very confident player. <laughs> um, you know, if you were to ever interview, you probably go back and like watch a lot of the interviews with Piglet. He was always like, yeah, I'll beat them. Yeah, 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 easy. You know, like he believed that he would always be able to win. And I think that's an important quality of a world championship player. In terms of our strategy as a team, it was, okay, Piglet's really good. He's got high mechanics. Just let Piglet carry. <laughs> that was the goal, right? Piglet, consistently amazing. Piglet is good every single game. Forced into a fight, they only wanted for a little bit here. Matt's very low. Piglet, Piglet doing some damage from over the wall. Piglet That's with a three. triple, looking for a quadra here, and it's gonna be another one as he picks up Darshan. Piglet with a quadra kill. That fight was so good. And they're going to be going hard on this one. Oh. Piglet shots onto Hoogie. There goes the machine gun mage. He's down. Lance Respite is given a little bit of safety over to CLG, but it's not going to be enough. They close the door. Oh they finalize God. the fight. And Piglet goes forward for a triple kill as the team follows behind him. What a turnaround. One for TL, two for CLG, and TL will not go quietly into the night. We're going to a game five. Who moves on to the finals? Does CLG get a chance to defend the championship? Or is Team Liquid going to shatter their curse and finally make it to finals for the first time ever? I've tried everything. Roster changes, moving players around, coaches, changing coaching staff. You keep trying, you keep doing what you need to do. And you get to this moment where you're just right there. You're in game five, you're about to play CLG and everything is on the line. You lose this game, you're out. All right. We're juiced up. We're juiced up. All right. And the truth comes out. Whenever you're ready, enjoy. Do you remember like kind of what happened throughout the series? I think it was, it was pretty, pretty close, Pretty, close, right? pretty close. I think it was pretty close. I'll have to go back and watch this. Yeah. It's a wild, it's a wild game, Chief. Let me tell you. <laughs> so this is fight. Don't worry about this fight. It's okay. what happens after the fight okay. that you'll recognize. All right. Do you remember Trevor? What Trevor does here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm dead. I must have dashed in. <laughs> it's the theme of the series. <laughs> yeah. For the yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. There's gonna be a few Get traps. On the Smithy. For Smithy. He's going in. Lamb's respite is up to be used. Dardock very low. Focused resolve blocks down. Hoogie. And that's gonna be Piglet. Sticks in. Huge going down. He wasn't even able to get his summoner off. I remember. We all say Trevor. <laughs> and then he's like, it's fine, it's fine. Rick's side, Rick's side. Yeah, mini Rick's side. I'm going IV in two. I'm on the Nice. 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 I'm on the. Trevor. Trevor. No, 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 no. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. You can get him, you can get him. It's fine, you guys, it's fine. I was playing Lucian, I kept dashing in, and then he was just like, dude, stop dashing in, please. And then instantly I was like, okay, I'm, I'm like throwing this game really hard. Like I need, to, I need to chill out a bit and just let my team do the work. And we finally 
uh, caught them. We got Baron. And I think we got lots of confidence. Oh, this is our game to take. I think we should have ended the game. We did something terribly wrong. I can't remember exactly what happened. Caitlyn putting some traps down and we couldn't siege any towers. And like he has such a huge range, like it was pretty stressful to, to deal with them because I was playing Rise. We didn't have a great engage tool. Yeah, we um, didn't. So it was actually pretty impossible to get on him. Finally, they get X Smithy down, but the Guardian Angel keeps yes. him off. Just a miss oh, on the dredge line. There goes Phoenix. Matt is down. CLG looking to put oh, the Piglet. finishing Piglet. touches Piglet. on Piglet. He's going hard. Piglet gets one. He gets two. I think Not the so game bad. can start feeling like a little uncomfortable when you get to like late game and then you're just outscaled. Yeah. And you're just like, oh shit, we gotta like, uh, yeah. we gotta somehow win this. It feels really tense. It feels like every single, like, it gets to a point in the game where it's just like one mistake wins or loses the game. And that's where, like, everything's on a nice edge, right? And it's very, very tense. I and mean, I think that's probably the most fun part of the game to play, where it's just like you play as a team, enemy plays as a team, one, like, the weakest link or one mistake, and you're done. Do you remember how game five ended? I do remember how Game 5 ended because it was one of those moments in League history that you just don't forget. The Piglet has a chance to stay over that wall, even unpeeled. He can do some big damage. Eyes on him in these fights. The Piglet is definitely in hypercarry mode right now, but Darshan wants to kill him! Uh, that's a little ambitious. Thinking back to it, it's like beautiful to like have that trust in each other that like I didn't even have to question it like if I made a call that like my teammate would trust me 100 percent I think that play like really shines or rings true in like our team and like the innovation that we had and the trust that we had in each other he can do some big damage eyes on him in these fights for sure yeah, Piglet is definitely in hypercarry mode right now but Darshan wants to kill him <laughs> That's a little ambitious. Oh, 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 he only thought it was one. He had to have only thought it was one TP, and he could exit that with a caliber net. Someone made that call. I don't know who it was to this day. I don't know who made the call. They had two or three people dead. And then Darshan randomly said to TP. I just trusted his call. We can TP mid, Jay. Double TP mid. All right. You have GA, right? No, no, not yet. Uh, we can TP now. You want All right, to? I'm All right. I just TP on the same minion as soon as he TP. I just clicked it. <laughs> you just clicked it. Yeah, he didn't notice. So. <laughs> oh my gosh! I can't believe he didn't notice. Yeah. He placed one trap. I'm like, okay, he doesn't know. And then Darshan came up, and then he thinks uh, he's killing Darshan, and then I came <laughs> up. <laughs> it was pretty funny. That's actually. pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. I remember Jake saying no. Oh yeah. Because Jake, Jake, Jake was our no man. Like, <laughs> Jake was like, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And then we like, oh my god, I wish you guys throw the comms in, but it's so funny. Because he's saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. We kill Caitlyn, he's like, oh. <laughs> Coming. Don't go in, don't go in, don't go in, don't go in. Okay. You got him, you got him, you got him. Nice, nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. No, they had this. Thank you, for no, the time machine. Amazing. So there you go. Now I know the answer. It was Dashan's call. Jay gave the information too. He's like, I can TP. And then you said, let's the double TP. That's true. So. You're, you're kind of running through all the, the simulations of what could happen, and you realize, like, there's nothing. This is ours. Like, we won. So that was it. Literally one kill on Caitlyn was all that game needed. Yeah. I think me and Dashan was so excited. And then everyone else was telling us to calm down. Yeah, Afro just like, all right, guys, calm down. I'm going to tell you guys a story of exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> so we're going to do A, and then we're going to do B, and then it's going to be OK, because we're going to do C. He can do some big damage. Eyes on him in these fights, for sure. Yeah, Piglet is definitely in hypercarry mode right now, but Darshan wants to kill him. That's a little ambitious. Oh, double TP! Double. It's two of them, double TP! He only thought it was one. He had to have only thought it was one TP, and he could exit that with a caliber net. Here we go. 
12 seconds. We want to go for the win, boys. Onto Piglet may be able to end the game and punch their ticket to the finals. 35 seconds on Piglet. CLG may get the chance to defend that championship with two new members. It means a lot to Huey. It means a lot to Stixate to get that chance. But it means a whole hell of a lot to the returning members to get back on that final stage. Counter Logic Gaming takes down Team Liquid. As soon as the game ended, and I see Darshan running at me and hugging me, and other three teammates, they doesn't know what to do, so they, they just hugged us. Hug too. sandwich. Yeah. So it just became a weird hug sandwich instead of a huddle, but it felt pretty nice. <laughs> it felt pretty nice. I think that play actually gave us a lot of momentum. Um, the way how we ended that game, the way how on game five we did it just gave us like a lot of yeah momentum going forward just feel like this team can't do anything wrong yeah. just trust each other yeah all come down to this will it be TSM will it be counter logic gaming right now we are looking to crown the North American champion what do you think fans remember? About this CLG roster? Friendship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of fans would say it was their favorite, if not one of their favorite iterations of CLG. And he's going in for the reset! Yellow Star he's got goes another down. one! He's going oh for God. three! Stick stay! They can go ahead! Uh, you can just kind of tell when people get along together, right? You can see through the camera, like the interactions and the comms and things like that. And I think fans could see that these guys really had a connection. I mean, winning always helps. It's CLG proof! You can change the players, but the faith remains! And they're gonna walk to their second consecutive North American LCS Championship! It was just kind of what, what it all built up through the entire split, right? Like, we, we practiced really hard. We did all these things that we thought would help us win the split, and success, like finally the, I got the reward, you know, of it all. They ended up going on a run, <laughs> representing North America further than I think we've been in a long time, right? Or maybe the furthest up to that point. And I think that speaks volumes to the ability of rebuilding in the right way, that you can do it. It can be done wrong in a lot of other aspects, but I really do give kudos to CLG for taking the risk, putting their plans in motion, and executing, and getting the results. Teams envied what we had, right? I knew that like what we had was, was different, and uh, that teams can only hope to have that kind of like, connection and friendship and stuff. When you have a team like that, that can kind of like reach those heights, you have a level of respect for these guys that will never go away. Like it's always there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just different. And I don't think anyone, you know, but those four players know what I'm talking about. I think that that CLG team is always going to be remembered as one of NA's greatest teams. Whenever it's brought up in topic of who is the best NA team internationally or in general, it's, I mean, CLG 2016 is always brought up. Like everyone always thinks that. And yeah, I, I think it's a good legacy to have. LG the numbers advantage, they're looking for Faker, they've got him! Counter Logic Gaming, score a magnificent win for America! A double kill for Uwe, a kill for is going oh, I can't believe it! A triple kill! They are gonna win! I never doubted him! I never doubted them! People are always trying to recreate success, right? They want to bottle that magic, but I think that's what's beautiful about teams and moments like that, right? You can't really know all the intangibles. Sometimes things just work well together.
When I think back on my fondest times on CLG, I felt like we really were a family. When you have a real bond with your teammates and you care about them more beyond just being on the rift together, I think that's when you have something special. And I think that the 2016 team was something special.